an application. None. Adoption of the minutes. Do we have a mover and a seconder? I'll move. Moved by John Andrews and seconded by John Seldon. All in favor? Carried. Business arising out of the minutes? Arising out of the uh, correspond, no, the Q, disclosure of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof. Application 7022, right? Yep, yep. Any correspondence or items for information? No, Chairman. Thank you. A business arising from correspondence? There isn't any either. No, Chairman. New business? Okay. So consent applications? First item is E69-22. Take notice an application has been made by Scott and Ruth Ann Kirsten, Eden Line, Bayham, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, Deborah Lands, mutually known as 57220 Eden Line. The applicant proposes to sever a parcel with a frontage of 38.1 meters, 125 <laughs> feet, and a new depth of 61.9 meters, 203 feet, and an area of 0.54 acres to create a new residential lot. The applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 71 meters, 234.94 feet, and a depth of 371.89 meters, 1,220 feet, and an area of 5.65 acres proposed to remain in residential use. To any of applicants or agents or interested parties who wish to speak to this application, please introduce yourself to the committee. Uh, yep, Scott Christensen here. I have nothing to add at this time. Thank you. Uh, turn it over now to Paul, Paul Clark for uh, the planning procedures. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this uh, is an application to create a new residential parcel. It is located beside a previously uh, severed parcel from the same parent lot. The subject land is designated as a tier two settlement area in the county official plan. It is designated as a hamlet in the local official plan. And the subject land is zoned hamlet residential and agricultural A1. In respect of the provincial policy statement, section 1.1.3 of the PPS permits lot creation in settlement areas and directs that settlement areas be the focus of growth and development within municipalities. In respect of the County of Elgin official plan, it is a tier two settlement area. Those are smaller than tier one settlement areas in which have access to partial municipal services. Lot creation is permitted in all settlement areas subject to the criteria of section E1.2.3.1 of the official plan. Staff have reviewed this severance for those criteria and found that it meets all necessary criteria. The applicant is proposing to create a new residential lot and continue the existing residential use of the retained lands. With regards to the municipal official plan and zoning bylaw, in the Bayham official plan, it is designated as a hamlet. And the uh, section two, section 4.2.4.1 of the Bayham OP permits lot creation in hamlet areas. The subject land is zoned under two zones, hamlet residential and agricultural A1. Uh, the lands that are proposed to be severed are located within the HR zone and proposed single detached uses are permitted in that zone. Uh, because this application is deemed consistent with the provincial policy statement, official plans, and zoning bylaw, staff are recommending that this application be approved with conditions. Number one, that a digital copy of the draft and final deposited reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. 
Number two is solicitor undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the County of Elgin. Number three, municipal addressing to be provided to Elgin County from the local municipality prior to final approval. Yeah, to it's muted factor. now. But I, I can't get our volume turned up. It's not muted. Uh, it's not muted. Got it. Uh, and additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the municipality of Bayham be included as conditions for consent. Number one, installation of an individual private well on the severed lot with water quantity and water quality reports for bacteria and nitrates content, meeting the provincial standards for residential use as a matter of public health and safety. Number two, installation of a municipal sanitary sewer connection to the severed lot at the applicant's cost for permits and installation. Number three, provide engineered stormwater drainage and grading plan showing the lot will not have a negative drainage impact on the abutting lands. Number four, that the applicant initiate and assume if required all engineering costs associated with the preparation of a revised assessment schedule for the Eden Line West Branch drain in accordance with the Drainage Act 1990 as amended with the deposit to be paid in full to the municipality prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. If the deposit does not cover the costs of the revised assessment schedule, the applicant will be billed for any additional costs incurred. Number five, municipal road access permit. Number six, purchase of a civic number sign for the severed lot. Number seven, cash in lieu of parkland dedication fee to the municipality for the created lot. Number eight, planning report fee payable to the municipality. Number nine, provide a digital copy of the registered plan of survey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Is there any questions from any of the members of the committee? John? Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, to, to Paul. Paul, we had discussions on the placement of the signage. Signage was up in good time, but not separated between the two sides of the lot. But I don't see that as a hindrance to this going through. Is is it problematic at all that, that the signs were not separated initially? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the signs were posted on the subject lot within the minimum timelines required under the Planning Act. I do believe this application can move forward. Even though the signs weren't separated to either side of the lot? Yes. Any further questions from any member? Moved by John Andrews. Second. Seconded by Dennis O'Grady. <clears throat> Moved by John Andrews, seconded by Dennis O'Grady, resolved that severance application E69-2022 be approved with conditions. Doug Aldred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Yes. Ian Fleck? Yes. 7-0, the motion's carried. The decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends after which they can be removed. If you'd like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at algon.ca. Mm. Do you think there's any uh, coincidence in the fact that uh, over our meeting is being canceled and the staff showing up? Yeah. yeah. The next application is E70-22. Take notice that an application was made by Amy Dale Gunn and Associates St. Thomas, Ontario, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act 1990, as amended to Sever Lands, legally described as Lot 15, concession northwest of the North Branch of Talbot Road, Ta Township of Southwold. The applicant proposed to sever a parcel of the frontage of 454.18 meters, 1,490.1 feet, and a depth of 197.493 meters. 647.94 feet and an area of 
10 point of 10 point 305 hectares 25.46 acres for future residential development the applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 813.186 meters 2667.93 feet and a depth of 408 meters 1338.58 feet and an area of 27.625 hectares 68.26 acres proposed to remain in agricultural use. Applicants or agents and interested parties who wish to speak to this application, please introduce yourself to the committee. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, my name is Helen Button. I'm here from Gun and Associates on behalf of Amy Dale. Um, Jane Andrews had been going to try to attend, but wasn't sure she'd be able to. I don't see her attending remotely. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes, I have an interest in it. I have property on Gun Street North and Seven. My name is Lillian Adley Darrell. Okay, thank you. If you want to know what I want to know? We'll we'll call you later, okay? Well, I'm just curious as to uh, what is going to happen in that area. It's a low area, and uh, as everyone here should know, business will play. And the development of that area in a low area now, which is farmland, uh, how is that going to affect the, the newer homes along the uh, Union Road that have been built and have issues with water because of uh, the clay? Where is the runoff water going? What about sewage? And how is that going to affect the municipal drains along the Union Road? Are they going to be upgraded and uh, uh, no more issues with water in that area? Also, we're giving up a bunch of farmland, which, uh, you know, is a concern. Okay, I just need to have her spell her last name. Could you spell your last name, please? A D D L E Y hyphen E A R E L. Perfect. Thank you. I ask that you would speak up a little bit if you don't mind. Okay, so. Oh, great. Thanks. Harvest it. Thank you, Trump. I'll get the bigger mouth. Just wait till she gets seated mm here. -hmm. <laughs> I am deaf in one ear. So I'm going to ask Paul Clark, the planner, to speak to what you just said and to bring us up to date on what the planning act or is planned for the municipality and the county. That would be great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So as you mentioned, this is an application to sever a uh, parcel for future residential development. Uh, the County of Elgin official plan designates the severed parcel as tier two settlement area and the retained parcel is designated as agricultural area. In the local and municipal official plan, the severed parcel is designated as residential and the uh, retained parcel is designated agricultural. <laughs> In respect of the local uh, municipal zoning bylaw, the severed parcel is designated settlement reserve and the retained parcel is designated agricultural 1A1. Uh, with respect of the provincial policy statement, the parcel being severed is entirely within the settlement area. Uh, it is a tier two settlement area, which does permit lot creation. Uh, staff have reviewed this proposal against uh, the official plan policies in respect of the tier two settlement area and found that the Retained lands that are designated agricultural are proposed to remain in active agricultural use, whereas the severed parcel is proposed for future residential development. However, no specific development proposals have been presented at this time. Uh, we have reviewed this proposal in respect of Section E1.2.3.1 of the official plan and found no deficiencies in respect of the consent requirements. For the local municipal official plan and zoning bylaw in the township of Southwold official plan, it is designated as residential for the severed parcel, which does permit lot creation. The retained lands is designated agricultural. There are no new lots being proposed in the agricultural area. The severed parcel is designated settlement reserve. The settlement reserve zone only allows existing uses to continue. It does not allow uh, new residential uses, so that will need to be rezoned. And the Township of Southwold planning staff have proposed a condition as a result of this severance to rezone the severed parcel to one that permits residential development when the actual development proposal is brought forth. Uh, this application is deemed consistent with the provincial policy statement. It complies with the County of Elgin official plan, the Township of Southwold official plan policies. As such, planning staff are of the opinion that this application is acceptable 
and do recommend approval subject to the following conditions. Number one, that a digital copy of the draft and final deposit reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, a solicitor undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the County of Elgin. Number three, that the owner dedicate the lands along the frontage of the severed and retained parcel up to 18 meters from the center line of construction of Union Road, County Road 20 to the County of Elgin for the purposes of a road widening if the right of way is not already to that width to the satisfaction of the county engineer all costs to be borne by the owner. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the Township of Southwold be included as conditions for consent. Number one, that the applicant meet all requirements, financial and otherwise, of the municipality to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number two, that the applicant provides a description of the lands to be severed, which can be registered in the land registry office to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number three, that the applicant solicitor provides an undertaking to the municipality to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once the transaction has occurred to the municipality. Number four, that the applicant successfully applied to the municipality for a zoning bylaw amendment to rezone the retained lands and having such rezoning of the amendment and to rezone retained lands, or sorry, zoning bylaw amendment come into full force and effect pursuant to the Planning Act to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. <laughs> That the applicant have a drainage reapportionment completed pursuant to the drainage act to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number six, that the applicant provide a mutual drain agreement pursuant to the drainage act to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number seven, that the applicant have a septic system assessment be completed by a qualified individual on the proposed retained parcel to ensure that the lands are suitable for a privately owned and operated septic system to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number eight, that the driveway entrance and 911 signs be obtained if required. Number nine, the applicant solicitor provide a request for clearance of conditions to the municipality demonstrating how all the conditions of consent have been fulfilled, satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number 10, that prior to the final approval of the county, the county is advised in writing by the municipality how the above noted conditions have been satisfied. Number 11, that all conditions noted above shall be fulfilled within two years of the notice of decision so that the County of Elgin is authorized to issue the Certificate of Consent pursuant to Section 53, Subsection 42 of the Planning Act. Number 12, that the severed lands be merged on title to create one parcel. Thank you, Paul. Are there any comments from any of the members of the committee? Dennis? Maybe the only comment I've got, and perhaps to help you out, is there's a lot of work that needs to be done at the township level. They need to rezone it. Um, everything that they've done here is according to the law and planning and all of that. But there's a lot of work that needs to be done at the local level. They need to have uh, subdivision plans, drainage plans. This is going to be a subdivision. It's not going to be a single house. So they're going to have to go through a lot of studies to address some of the concerns that you've talked about. And that's done in most subdivisions. So I think your best bet is to work with the council to make sure that the concerns that you want are going to be included in the studies that they have to do in order to develop a subdivision on those lands. Now, would that be addressed to council after the application for severance? Or is that prior to, I would? No, no we, will, we will vote on the application of severance in a minute. But uh, regardless of what happens here, you should make your comments and your thoughts known to council, the new council. With the, I'm sorry, with the township? Yes. The township, yes. The township will be having public meetings. Okay. On that, you'll know you'll be notified. There'll be public no okay. notices given out when they're doing any considerations on those pieces of property. That's good to know. And could I ask how many um, building lots they're talking? I I'm sorry, with all this. Oh, it's up to them. It's, they have to have a certain. They're the ones. Yes. The township. Yep. Right now, that is the size of lots, and I think as you know, they're everybody's trying to squeeze more in. So that's up to the local municipality what okay. they do. So there will be further meetings regarding yes, yes. township of South Wolf. Okay, that's good. And I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Well, <clears throat> any further questions from any member? Moved by Rosemary, seconded by Dew. Moved by Rosemary Kennedy, seconded by Doug Aldred, resolved that severance application E70-2022 be approved with conditions. Doug Aldred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Yes. Ian Fleck? Yes. 7-0, the motion's carried. Yeah. 6-0. Six six or 6-0, six 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 sorry. Six <laughs> <laughs> just, 
We can get uh, Mr. Anderson. Then we can get Mr. Anderson back in. But the decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20-day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you'd like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at algon.ca. Next step. He's, he's coming. He's coming. Yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> The next application is E71-22. <clears throat> Take notice that an application is made by David Rose Civic Planning Solutions Incorporated, Tilsonburg, Ontario, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act as amended to sever lands legally described as part of Lot 13, Concession 10, Township of Malahide. The applicant proposes to sever a parcel of the frontage of 50.9 meters, 167 feet, and a depth of 40.54 meters, 133 feet, and an area of 20 <coughs> meters squared or 0.52 acres proposed to remain in residential use. The applicant is retaining a lot with a total frontage of 81.74 meters, 268.18 feet, and a depth of 40.38 meters, 132.48 feet, and an area of 3,100 meters squared, 0.77 acres, proposed to continue in its current use. Applicants or agents or interested parties who wish to speak to this application, please introduce yourself to the committee. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, David Rowe here, agent uh, for the applicant. I'm here to answer any questions that the committee might have. Thanks. Thank you, David. I'll now ask Paul Clark, the planner, to go through the procedures for the planning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this application is essentially to uh, sever lots that had previously merged on title. Uh, there are existing buildings on the severed and retained lots. Uh, it is designated as a tier three settlement area in the County of Elgin official plan. It is designated Hamlet in the local official plan and is currently <coughs> zoned Hamlet Residential HR. Uh, staff have reviewed this application on the uh, auspice of the provincial policy statement and found that it does comply with the provincial policy statement under section 1.1.3, which permits slot creation in settlement areas. This is also, again, to just uh, essentially reverse a previous merger on title. Um, in regards to the County of Elgin official plan, this is a tier three settlement area. They are the smallest settlement areas in the county. They are typically on uh, private well and septic service. Uh, the applicant has identified that both lots have access to existing private services and the severance is not anticipated to have any impact on those services. Uh, with respect of the Township of Malahide official plan, uh, Malahide staff have reviewed this application against their official plan policies and have found that it meets the land use designations and policies. Uh, with respect of the zoning bylaw, it is currently zoned Hamlet residential and the proposed severed and retained lots are anticipated to meet the requirements of the HR zone as they were presented in the application. For that reason, uh, staff believe that this application is consistent with the provincial policy statement. It complies with the County of Elgin official plan, the Township of Malahide official plan policies. And as such, staff are recommending approval of the application subject to the following conditions. Number one, that a digital copy of the draft and final deposit reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, a solicitor undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the County of Elgin. Number three, that the owners dedicate lands along the frontage of the retained lot or parcel up to 18 meters from the center line of construction of Imperial Road, County Road 73 to the County of Elgin for the purposes of road widening 
if the right of way is not already to that width to the satisfaction of the county engineer, all costs to be borne by the owner. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the Township of Malahide be included as conditions for consent. Number one, that the applicant initiate and assume, if required, all engineering costs associated with the preparation of a revised assessment schedule in accordance with the Drainage Act 1990 as amended, with a deposit to be paid <coughs> to the township prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. If the deposit does not cover the costs of the revised assessment schedule, the applicant will be billed for any additional costs incurred. Number two, that the applicant be required to retain the services of a professional designer and have an engineered lot grading development plan and ditch grading plan prepared in accordance with good engineering practices that are suitable to the township prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Number three, that all outstanding work orders or bylaw enforcement issues be resolved to the satisfaction of the chief building official prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Number four, confirmation that private sewage system be confined entirely within the boundaries of the newly created parcel. That system being in conformance with all required setbacks from lot lines prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Number five, that all necessary deeds, transfers, and charges for certificates and or instruments necessary for registration be submitted in triplicate prior to certification, all of which are to be fully executed. Number six, that all applicable property taxes, municipal fees, and charges be paid to the municipality prior to the stamping of the deeds. Number seven, that an electronic version of the reference plan be submitted to the satisfaction of the municipality. Number eight, that the applicant is responsible to apply and pay fees to the township with respect to civic addressing numbers slash signage for the severed and retained portions of property prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Is there any members of the committee have any questions, comments? I'll make a motion. Moved by Rosemary. I'll second it. And seconded by Jack. Moved by. Moved by Rosemary Kennedy, seconded by Jack Van Castron, resolved that severance application E-71-2022 be approved with conditions. Drew Galdred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Ian Fleck? Yes. 7-0, the motion's carried. The decision, <clears throat> excuse me, the decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 <clears throat> days of the giving of notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at algon.ca. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Thank you, too. Yep. Bye now. Pretty straightforward. He's retired. People don't understand. He's moved. Oh, he did the right beat on noise until we have to argue. Did it cancel? Does it? Yeah. Yes, the next application is E72 22. Take notice that an application has been made by Jeremy and Michelle Beijing, 20, 22202 Douglas Line, Rodney. For consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act, as of Andrew Severlands, mutually known as 20, 222.02 Douglas Line. The applicants propose to sever a parcel of the frontage of 20.015 meters, 65.67 feet, and a depth of 58.013 meters, 190.33 feet, and an area of 2,749.519 meters squared, 0.67 acres, to create a new residential lot. The applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 23.476 meters, 77.02 feet, and a depth of 50.078 meters, 164.3 feet, and an area of 1,245.612 meters squared, 0.3 acres, proposed to remain in residential use. Do any applicants or agents or interested parties who wish to speak to this application, 
please introduce yourself to the committee. My name is Jeremy Bijan, Jeremy. Let's see, have any questions? Thank you. Pass. Yep. Come up, if you mind, come on. Sure. And I'll ask Paul Clark, to the planner, to the uh, planning reports. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this is for an application to create a new residential lot from an existing uh, residential parcel in a primarily residential built-up area, uh, Port Glasgow specifically. Um, in the County of Elgin official plan, this area is designated as agricultural area. <laughs> in the local official plan, it's designated as lakeshore area and subject to the Port Glasgow secondary plan and is currently zoned Hamlet residential. Um, there are some unique aspects about this application. Um, so I'm going to go slightly out of order in terms of the normal planning report that I would usually deliver just to yeah. give some uh, necessary context for this application. So as I mentioned, the County of Elgin official plan designates this area as agricultural area, which typically does not permit uh, new lot creation. However, under section F 10.2 of the official plan interpretation of land use designation boundaries, the official plan states the following. The boundaries of settlement areas identified on Schedule A of this plan are representative of the boundaries as delineated in the local official plans. As a result, the local official plan should be consulted for accurate settlement area boundaries. Expansions to settlement areas should only occur in accordance with the policies of this plan. So uh, I did reach out to the planner, uh, uh, Robert Brown, for this application to discuss this with him, um, given that the official plans appear to not um, necessarily agree with the land use designation of this area. And given that Port Glasgow is a primarily residential and built up area already, um, we both agree that given the interpretation and given the fact that West Elgin official plan designates this area as a hamlet, which would typically be considered a settlement area in the county official plan. Um, I believe that we should be applying settlement area policies to this application. So with that respect, um, I believe that in terms of the provincial policy statement, we should consider this to be a settlement area. And section 1.1.3, of course, does permit lot creation in settlement areas. Uh, again, going back to the municipality of West Elgin's official plan, uh, Robert Brown, the planner for West Elgin, believes that this application is consistent with West Elgin's official plan policies, and it is within the Port Glasgow secondary plan, and that policy has no uh, negative effect on this application. Um, lot creation is permitted in the Lakeshore area by subdivision approval or consent. Um, and in respect of the zoning bylaws designated Hamlet residential, which of course, as the name implies, it is a residential zone, um, and staff have recommended that they are uh, requesting a minor variance for the lot frontage as a result of this uh, consent, but have identified no other issues with any local zoning or official plan policies. So for those reasons, uh, staff are of the opinion that this is consistent with the provincial policy statement. It complies with the County of Elgin official plan and Township of Malahide official plan. Staff are recommending approval of this application with conditions. Number one, that the digital copy of the draft and final deposit reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, is lists are undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed to be provided to the County of Elgin. Number three, municipal addressing to be provided to Elgin County from the local municipality prior to final approval to the satisfaction of Elgin County. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the municipality of West Elgin be included as conditions for consent. Number one, that the applicant meet all the requirements, financial and otherwise, of the municipality to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number two, that the applicant provides a description of the lands to be severed, which can be registered in the land registry office to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number three, that the applicant solicitor provides an undertaking to the municipality to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once the transaction has occurred to the municipality. Number four, that the applicant have a drainage reapportionment completed if required pursuant to the Drainage Act to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number five, that the applicant shall make a payment of cash in lieu of applicable parkland dedication pursuant to section 51.1 of the Planning Act to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number six, that the applicant make an application for and receive approval of a minor variance to address the reduced frontage of the severed and retained parcels to the satisfaction of the municipality. Number seven, that the applicant make, ap make an application for a new access to the severed parcel. Any improvements required as a result of the new access shall be at the applicant's expense. 
Number eight, that prior to the final approval of the county, the county is advised in writing by the municipality how the above noted conditions have been satisfied. Number nine, that all conditions noted above shall be fulfilled within two years of the notice of decision so that the County of Elgin is authorized to issue the certificate of consent pursuant to section 53, subsection 42 of the Planning Act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any comments from any of the members? John? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, Paul, I, I really appreciated you doing the extra legwork on the uh, CEOP and the local plan um, or o official plan. However, are there criteria that uh, that, some, that Elgin County uses to determine whether or not the CEOP overrides the local plan or not. This comes up occasionally, and it just interests me as to why why Elgin County defers to the local plan, or is that just is is that just a a, a general rule that the local plans are deferred to? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, in general. Uh, the wording of the County of Elgin official plan usually defers to the local official plan when there's issues of the specific boundaries, specifically of settlement areas and land use designations. Is that right? Yeah, in most cases. But did you not read the section of the Planning Act that states that you would normally defer to? Isn't that, that um, the Planning Act section? I forget what you said, 91 or whatever, when you first started. It not specify that in the case of a discrepancy that the local plan would be adhered to. I think not. That's what I heard. Sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. I think that that was section ten point two of the OP. Yeah. Uh, and yes, and that's the section that says that if there is a disagreement, um, that the local official plan for settlement area boundaries shall be taken. So the CEOP is subordinate to the local plan. At least in these matters. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, when there's a disagreement over land use designation boundaries, the CEOP defers to the local official plan. Okay, thank you, Paul. Any further questions from anybody? Doug? This makes total sense to me. If there's no other questions, I'll move it. Moved by Doug Aldred, second by John Andrews. Moved by Duke Aldred, seconded by John Andrews. Resolved that severance application E72 2022 be approved with conditions. Duke Aldred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Yes. Ian Fleck? Yes. 7 0. The motion's carried. The decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20-day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at algon.ca. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time in the matter. Thank Again. you. Have a good day. You as well. Thank you. Next application is E7322. Take notice an application is made by Helen Button, Gunn and Associates, 108 Center Street, St. Thomas, on behalf of Yorkland Farms, 473 Valley Street, Port Stanley, Ontario, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act 1990, as amended, to sever lands mutually known as 45714 Edgeware Line. The applicants propose to sever a parcel of the frontage of 60.9 meters, 199.80 feet, and a depth of 96.33 meters, 316.04 feet, and an area of 0.6 hectares, 
1.48 acres to se sever an existing residential dwelling that is surplus to the farming operation. The applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 514 meters, 1,686.35 feet, and a depth of 661 meters, 2,168.64 feet, and an area of 39.6 hectares, 97.85 acres, proposed to remain in agricultural use. Do we have any applicants or agents and interested parties who wish to speak to this application? Please introduce yourself to the committee. Good morning again. You have Helen Button here. I don't believe anyone from Yorkland Farms is here this morning. Thank you very much. And I'll ask Paul Clark, the planner, to go through the planning procedures. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this is for a surplus farm dwelling severance. Uh, it is designated as agricultural in the County of Elgin official plan. It is also designated agricultural in the local official plan and is currently zoned open space OS1 in the central Elgin zoning bylaw. With respect to the provincial policy statement, uh, this application is to sever a surplus farm dwelling. Uh, the size of the severed residential parcel is uh, 0.6 hectares, and the applicant is retaining a farm parcel with an area of 39.6 hectares. Uh, generally, the PPS discourages lot creation in the prime agricultural area, except in a few circumstances, one of those being for surplus dwellings to a farming operation, which this is. Staff have reviewed this application against section 2.3.4.1 of the PPS, which is the section that deals specifically with uh, surplus farm severances. It is the opinion of staff that this new lot that will be created does satisfy the requirements of that section, specifically that the new lot be limited to the minimum size and that the planning authority ensures that new residential dwellings are prohibited on the retained farmland parcel, which will be addressed through a proposed zoning bylaw that is a requested condition of consent from the municipality of Central Elgin. Uh, in respect of the specific boundaries of the lot, as indicated on the drawings submitted by the applicant with the application, uh, the farmland parcel, or sorry, the severed dwelling is roughly following the existing cultivation lines. And so no uh, existing farmland is being taken with the severed dwelling. In respect to the County of Elgin official plan, much like the provincial policy statement, the CEOP uh, uh, discourages lot creation in, re in agricultural areas except for surplus farm dwelling severances. Uh, that specific section of the CEOP that deals with these types of severances is section E1.2.3.4. And uh, staff have reviewed it against the policies of that plan and have found that it is consistent with those with those policies. Uh, local staff have reviewed this application against the policies of the Central Elgin OP and zoning bylaw and have found no deficiencies. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Central Elgin staff have requested a condition of consent that the retained farmland parcel be rezoned to prohibit any future residential development. Uh, for those reasons, we believe that it is consistent with the provincial policy statement. It complies with both the County of Elgin and the Municipality of Central Elgin's official plan policies. And as such, we are recommending this application be approved with conditions. Number one, that the digital copy of the draft and final deposit reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, a solicitor undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the County of Elgin. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the Municipality of Central Elgin be included as conditions for consent. Number one, approval of a zoning bylaw amendment to prohibit residential dwellings on the retained lot. Number two, a copy of a reference plan be provided to the municipality of Central Elgin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Are there any comments from any of the members of the committee? A move. Second. Moved by John Andrews, seconded by Dennis O'Grady. Moved by John Andrews, seconded by Dennis O'Grady. Resolved that severance application E73-2022 be approved subject to conditions. Stu Galdred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Yes. Ian Fleck? Yes. 7-0, the motion's carried. The decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20-day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for a certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. 
please leave the identification signs in place. <coughs> the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of Dutay's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at algon.ca. <coughs> week ago Friday. Live. Application E74-22. Take notice of an application uh -huh. by David John Obar and Jessica Jane Kane, 11643 Plank Road, Eden, Ontario, for consent 
pursuant to section 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended to sever lands municipally known as 11643 Plank Road. The applicant proposes to sever a parcel of the frontage of 22.86 meters, 75 feet, and a depth of 45.72 meters, 150 feet, and an area of 1,445.159 meters square, 0.26 acres for the creation of a new residential lot. The applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 72 meters, 236.22 feet, and a depth of 118.33 meters, 388.22 feet, and an area of eight, 1,476.9 meters squared hec hectares or 2.9 acres proposed to remain in residential use. To any of the applicants or agents or interested parties who wish to speak to this application, please introduce yourself to the committee. David Obar here. Could you come to you again? Sit up. Easier for us to hear them. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask Paul Clark, the planner, to go through the planning procedures. I thank you, Mr. Chair. So this application is to create a new residential lot from an existing residential parcel in a tier two settlement area, is designated as a hamlet within the local official plan and is currently zoned hamlet residential. With respect to the provincial policy statement, section 1.1.3 directs that settlement areas shall be the focus of growth and development within municipalities. Uh, specifically, section 1.1.2 of the PPS directs that within settlement areas, sufficient land be made available through um, intensification and redevelopment. Uh, this proposal is uh, considered a form of intensification. The PPS defines that as a development yeah. property or site at a, area, at a higher density than currently exists through infill development. Uh, with respect of the County of Elgin official plan, uh, this is a tier two settlement area. Uh, tier two settlement areas are identified as those that are smaller than tier one settlement areas and have access to partial municipal services. Mm -hmm. Tier two settlement areas provide opportunities for infill development uh, through reserve capacity accommodating the existing development and the site conditions are suitable for long-term provision of the required private and public services. Uh, the applicant has identified that the severed and retained parcels will utilize a private well and public sewer system. Staff have reviewed this application against the general consent criteria of Section E 1.2.3.1 of the County of Elgin Official Plan and have found no deficiencies. Uh, with respect to the local official plan and zoning bylaw, municipal uh, staff at BAM have reviewed for the official plan policies. Uh, section 4.2.4.1 of the BAM OP states that municipalities shall encourage intensification redevelopment within settlement area boundaries on vacant or underutilized sites in order to efficiently utilize designated settlement area land and available municipal services. The proposed dwelling is currently zoned HR and the proposed use are uh, allowed in the Hamlet residential zone. For those reasons, the application is consistent with the provincial policy statement, complies with the County of Elgin official plan, and the Municipality of Bayham official plan policies. As such, uh, staff are recommending approval of this application with conditions. Number one, digital copy of the draft and final deposit reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, a solicitor undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the County of Elgin. Number three, that the owner dedicate lands along the frontage of the severed and retained lot slash parcel up to 18 meters from the center line of construction of Plank Road, County Road 19, to the County of Elgin for the purposes of a road widening, if the right of way is not already to that width to the satisfaction of the County Engineer, all costs to be borne by the owner. Number four, direct connection to a legal outlet for the severed lot is required. If an existing connection is unavailable to the satisfaction of the County Engineer, all costs to be borne by the owner. Discharge of water to the county road allowance is prohibited. Number five, lot grading plan is required for the severed lot. Number six, that if necessary, an entrance permit be obtained from Elgin County for a new entrance to the severed and or retained parcels. All costs associated with this shall be borne by the owner. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the municipality of Bayham be included as conditions for consent. Number one, installation of an individual private well on the severed lot with water quantity and water quality reports for bacteria and nitrates content, meeting the provincial standards for residential use as a matter of public health and safety. 
Number two, installation of a municipal sanitary sewer to the severed lot at the applicant's cost for permits and installation. Number three, provide engineering stormwater drainage and grading plan showing the lot will not have a negative impact on the abutting lands. Number four, that the applicant initiate and assume, if required, all engineering costs associated with the preparation of a revised assessment schedule for the West Branch Eden Drain in accordance with the Drainage Act 1990 as amended, with a deposit to be paid in full to the municipality prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. If the deposit does not cover the cost of the revised assessment schedule, the applicant will be billed for any additional costs incurred. Number five, confirmation from the County of Elgin for future access to the County Road. Number six, cash in lieu of parkland dedication to the municipality for the created lot. Number seven, planning report fee payable to the municipality. Number eight, provide a copy of a digital registered plan of survey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paul. Any comments from any members of the committee? John Selden. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, Mr. Obar, the, the entrance permit, uh, do you have a, a that's, that's a, Beautiful lot you've got there. It, it looks like a great location, but do you anticipate uh, any problems as far as an entrance location for that? None at all. It's a nice straight, yeah, such a road. Burnage, there's, it's wide there. Like there's no, I don't see for any problems at all for an entrance application and proof. And do you have any concerns about nitrates in your water? None. None at all. I had it tested. I had the water tested and supplied the um, report to the township. Um, and it came up zero and he, he down like there's just none there. Okay. Uh, thank you. Any further questions? <laughs> by John Andrews. Seconded by Doug Aldred. Moved by John Andrews, seconded by Doug Aldred. Resolved that severance application E74-2022 be approved subject to conditions. Doug Aldred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Castron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Yes. Ian Fleck? Yes. 7 0. The motion is carried. The decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary docu documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at Alvin.ca. Good. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Nice, nice. If you're creating some useless corner. You get your chips in. Forward well, application E75-22. Take notice an application is made by Paul Randois, 199 Main Street, Glencoe, Ontario, on behalf of Chris Liddy in the Hunt Trailers Incorporated, 12711 Furnival Road, Rodney, Ontario, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act as amended several lands mutually known as 22100 Downey Line. The applicant proposes to sever a parcel of the frontage of 30.480 meters, 100 feet, and a depth of 30.480 meters, 100 feet, and an area of 929 meters squared, 
6.23 acres to be conveyed as a lot addition to the decent. The applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 248.8 meters, 816.27 feet, and a depth of 598 meters, 1,961.94 feet, and an area of 194,049 meters squared hectares proposed to remain in agricultural use. Do any applicants or agents or interested parties who wish to speak to this application, please introduce yourself to the committee. Uh, good morning. My name is Paul. I'm agent for this application. I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you very much. I'll now ask Paul Clark, the planner, to uh, do the planning procedures. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this application is for a lot addition. Uh, from an existing agricultural parcel to a, an existing commercial parcel. Uh, it is designated agricultural area in the County of Elgin and local municipalities official plan, and the subject land is currently designated agricultural A1. With respect of the provincial policy statement, the applicant is applying to sever a parcel of about 930 square meters and convey it as a lot addition to an adjacent parcel located at 22336 Downey Line and is currently owned by In the Hunt Trailers Incorporated. Um, the lot addition will have the effect of extending the existing parcel's property lines so that they are in line with the boundaries of an adjacent parcel that is already owned by In the Hunt Trailers. Section 2.3.4.2 of the PPS does permit lot adjustments in agricultural areas for legal or technical reasons, and the PPS defines legal or technical reasons as severances for purposes such as easements, correction of deeds, quick claims, and minor boundary adjustments. <laughs> which does not result in the creation of a new lot. With respect of the County of Elgin official plan, uh, the County of Elgin official plan section E1.2.3.2 uh, is the section that deals with boundary adjustments and does uh, identify that boundary adjustments through consent may be granted in agricultural areas, uh, provided that they do not result in the creation of a new lot. The applicant is proposing to continue the existing agricultural use on the retained parcels, and the severed portion, portion is being added to a commercial lot. And my understanding is that the severed lot is already being used uh, for commercial purposes as of right now. With respect of the local official plan and zoning bylaw, staff at the municipality of West Elgin have reviewed the application and found that it does conform to the municipality of West Elgin's official plan. Uh, there is a slight uh, issue with the zoning bylaw, specifically that the retained parcel is currently zoned A1. And the lot that is being added to in the hunt trailers uh, property is currently zoned C3. So to address this discrepancy and avoid having two separate zones on one parcel, uh, the municipality of West Elgin has proposed a condition of consent to rezone the severed parcel to match the C3 zoning of the lot that it's being conveyed to. Uh, staff believe that this application is consistent with the provincial policy statement. It complies with the County of Elgin official plan and the municipality of West Elgin's official plan. As such, staff are recommending approval of this application with conditions. Number one, that the digital copy of the draft and final deposited reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, a solicitor undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the County of Elgin. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the municipality of West Elgin be included as conditions for consent. Number one, that the applicant meet all the requirements, financial and otherwise, of the municipality to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number two, that the applicant provides a description of the lands to be severed, which can be registered in the land registry office to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number three, that the applicant solicitor provides an undertaking to the municipality to provide a copy of the <coughs> deed for the severed parcel once the transaction has occurred to the municipality. Number four, that the severed parcel be conveyed and consolidated with the abutting parcel to the east, roll number 3434000200900. And, se and section 50, subsection 3 or 5 of the Planning Act apply to any subsequent application for consent. Number five, that the applicant have a drainage reapportionment completed if required pursuant to the Drainage Act to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number six, that the applicant make application for and receive approval of a zoning bylaw amendment to rezone the lot addition severed parcel to the same zone as the receiving lot and address the further reduction in the lot area of the retained farm parcel to the satisfaction of the municipality. Number seven, that prior to the final approval of the county, the county is advised in writing by the municipality how the above noted conditions have been satisfied. 
Number eight, that all conditions noted above shall be fulfilled within two years of the notice of decision so that the County of Elgin is authorized to issue the certificate of consent pursuant to section 53, subsection 42 of the Planning Act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paul. Any comments from any members of the committee? Nope, move it. Moved by Dennis. Second, Second by John Selden. Moved by Dennis O'Grady, seconded by John Selden, resolved that severance application E-75-2022 be approved subject to conditions. Doug Aldred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castren? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Ian Fleck? Yes. 7-0, the motion's carried. The decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20-day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of notice, the provisional <clears throat> consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification, or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at algon.ca. Okay. Yeah, got it. We got another one. Take that. notice an application was made by Tom and Nancy Mohan, 22997 
Silver Clay Line, Rodney, Ontario, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act as amended to sever lands municipally known as 22997 Silver Clay Line. The applicant proposed to sever a parcel of the frontage of 265 meters, 869.42 feet, and a depth of 786 meters, 2,578.74 feet, an area of 20.83 hectares, 51.47 acres, to remain in agricultural use. The applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 301 meters, 987.53 feet, and a depth of 731 meters, 2,398.30 feet, an area of 22.01 hectares, 54.39 acres proposed to remain in agricultural use. Do we have any applicants or agents and interested parties who wish to speak to this application? Please introduce yourself to the committee. Tom, what's up there? I think Dan's the next one. We, don't know. we have nobody to. My name is Tom Mohan. I am the applicant. Okay, thank you very much. I'll now call on Paul Clark, the planning. <laughs> planner to discuss the planning issues or... uh, thank you mr chair uh, so this application is essentially to sever two agricultural parcels that were previously merged on title uh, when they were held in identical ownership under uh, the rules of the planning act as you'll notice there's a little uh, corner there that is touching between the retained and severed uh, parcels which was enough to cause these two lots to merge uh, and the, the county of elgin official plan and local official plan, these lots are are designated agricultural, and they're both currently zoned to agricultural A1 in the West Elgin zoning bylaw. Uh, with respect of the provincial policy statement, the applicant is applying to sever two agricultural parcels which were merged on title, and each one is approximately 20 hectares in area. Uh, the PPS does allow for lot creation in agricultural areas when it is for uh, the creation of uh, farm lots provided that they are the size and type of agricultural uses common in the area and are sufficiently large enough to maintain flexibility for future changes. Uh, with respect to this specific application, as already mentioned, these applications were accidentally merged on title and they were previously separate parcels. Uh, this is just essentially a technical severance to undo uh, the accidental merge. Uh, with respect of the County of Elgin official plan, uh, staff have reviewed this application in accordance with section E1.2.3.4. Uh, lot creation for agricultural uses is permitted. The lot to be severed uh, to create a new farm lot is for both retained and severed parcels, each having an area of about 40 hectares or as established in the local planning documents. Uh, while the CEOP generally prescribes a minimum lot size of 40 hectares versus the 20 proposed, given this application is to return the lots to their original configuration as separate parcels, uh, staff are of the opinion that this is still keeping in with the intent of the County of Elgin official plan. Because again, we are just returning these lots to their original form. Uh, this is not a proposed new severance. Um, this is just undoing a technical merge. Now, with respect to the municipality of West Elgin official plan, uh, their planner, uh, Robert Brown, is in the opinion that this application conforms with the municipal official plan and the land use designations and policies of that plan. The subject land is currently zoned agricultural A1, and the applicants are proposing to continue the agricultural use of the property. Uh, given this, the application is deemed consistent with the provincial policy statement, complies with the County of Elgin official plan, and the municipality of West Elgin's official plan policies. As such, uh, staff recommend approval of the application. Uh, number one, a digital copy of the draft and final deposit reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two is listed undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel. Once completed, be provided to the County of Elgin. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the municipality of West Elgin be included as conditions for consent. Number one, that the applicant meet all the requirements, financial and otherwise, of the municipality to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number two, that the applicant provides a description of the lands to be severed, which can be registered in the land registry office to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number three, that the applicant solicitor provides an undertaking to the municipality um, to provide a copy of the deed for the severed parcel once the transaction has occurred to the municipality. Number four, that prior to the final approval of the county, 
The county is advised in writing by the municipality how the above noted conditions have been satisfied. Number five, that all conditions noted above shall be fulfilled within two years of the notice of decision so that the County of Elgin is authorized to issue the certificate of consent pursuant to section 53, subsection 42 of the Planning Act. Thank you, Paul. Are there any questions or comments from the members? John Selden. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Mohan, may I ask you, when did the merge occur? I believe I did a title search. It was in 1967. Yes. So that's a it's a it's a merging of long duration. Yes. You want it? Okay. Uh, thank you. I've done automatically. Oh. I'm moving by John Andrews, second by Duke Aldred. Ask for the vote, please. Uh, moved by John Andrews, seconded by Duke Aldred. Resolved that severance application E76 2022 be approved subject to conditions. Duke Aldred? Yes. John Zeldin? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Ian Fleck? <laughs> yes. 7 0, the motion's carried. Decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There's a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, Please request a copy by contacting Land Division at elgin.ca. E-77-22, take notice that an application is made by James C. Batten, 25 Bid Bidwell Road, Tilsonburg, on behalf of Antonio van der Blyveen and to Toby Lowell, 14056 Putnam Road, Springfield, Ontario, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act 1990. As the Mandu Sever Lands, mostly known as 14508 Putnam Road. The applicant proposed to sever a parcel with a frontage of 30.480 meters, 100 feet, and a depth of 15.240 meters, 50 feet, and an area of 464.515 meters squared, 0.11 acres, to be conveyed to an adjacent parcel. The applicant has received a lot with a frontage of 87.978 meters, 288.64 feet, and a depth of 60.960 meters, 200 feet, and an area of 5.363.138 meters squared, 1.33 acres, proposed to remain in agricultural use. 
Do we have any applicants or agents or interested parties who wish to speak to this application? Please introduce yourself to the committee. That's myself, Antoinette Ben-Lady. Antoinette Lovell. Okay, could you come up here and sit in these two chairs at the end of the table, please? And I'll ask Paul Clark, the planner, to go through the plan planning procedures. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this application is a lot addition. The applicants are proposing to sever off a parcel uh, that is essentially attached already to the uh, rear of their adjacent lot and formally add it to that parcel. Uh, it is currently designated as an agricultural area within the county of Elgin official plan and the local official plan, and the lot is currently designated small lot agricultural A4. Now, with respect to the provincial policy statement, uh, this application is for a lot addition within the agricultural area. Section 2.3.4.1 of the PPS does permit lot creation or lot addition, sorry, in agricultural areas where no new lot is created, as is the case in this uh, application here. With respect to the County of Elgin official plan, staff have reviewed the policies of the official plan in this application, uh, specifically section E1.2.3.4 of the uh, official plan, which does permit consents for legal or technical reason, reasons, which includes uh, lot adjustments and boundary adjustments that do not result in the creation of a new lot. With respect to the local official plan and zoning bylaw, uh, staff have reviewed this application with both of those and found that it does uh, meet the provisions of the local official plan. And the uh, subject land is currently zoned small lot agricultural A4. The parcel receiving the severed parcel is currently zoned rural residential. So to address this discrepancy, Township of Malahide staff proposes a condition of consent uh, that a zoning bylaw amendment be granted to rezone that severed parcel to match uh, the current zoning of the parcel that's being added to. This application is consistent with the provincial policy statement, complies with the County of Elgin official plan and the Township of Malahide official plan. As such, staff are recommending approval of this application subject to the following conditions. Number one, a digital copy of the draft and final deposited reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, a solicitor undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the County of Elgin. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the Township of Malahide be included as conditions for consent. Number one, that the applicant initiate and assume, if required, all engineering costs associated with the preparation of a revised assessment schedule in accordance with the Drainage Act 1990 as amended, with a deposit to be paid in full to the Township prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. If the deposit does not cover the costs of the revised assessment schedule, the applicant will be billed for any additional costs incurred. Number two, that the applicant be required to retain the services of a professional designer and have an engineered lot development and grading and ditch grading plan prepared in accordance with good engineering practices that are suitable to the township prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Number three, that all outstanding work orders or bylaw enforcement issues be resolved to the satisfaction of the chief building official prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Number four, that the necessary deeds, transfers, and charges or certificates and or instruments necessary for registration be submitted in triplicate prior to certification, all of which are to be fully executed. Number five, that all applicable property taxes, municipal fees, and charges be paid to the municipality prior to the stamping of the deeds. Number six, the new electronic version of the reference plan be submitted to the satisfaction of the municipality. Number seven, that the applicants initiate and assume all planning costs associated with the required zoning amendment process as required in accordance with the Ontario Planning Act 1990, with such costs to be paid in full to the township and that the required process be successfully completed prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Paul. Any comments from any of the members of the committee? Moved. Moved by Dennis O'Grady, seconded by Rosemary. Moved by Dennis O'Grady, seconded by Rosemary Kennedy. Solved that severance application E77-2020 <coughs> Be approved subject to conditions. Doug Aldred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Yes. Ian Fleck? Yes. 7 0. The motion's carried. The decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. 
If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at elgin.ca. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Since we have five minutes left before the next, um, So it must have been quite a shock to learn what you learned recently. It's, it was, uh, it's yeah. gut wrenching, actually. You never showed up on the deed or anything like that. No. no. Wow. Our the stakes were buried. Oh, you go ahead. The stakes were buried, yeah. And there was a shed built on that property that was all ours, sold to us. The trampoline is still cemented down there, birdhouse, everything. And that was all presented as that's your thought. And then now we have issues with our septic tank and had the ground penetrating radar. And sure enough, it runs all the way on that property. Wow. Yeah. It's sad what's happened over the years. Yeah. We've got it figured out now. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Application number E78-22. Take notice that an application has been made by Dan McKillop, 29094 Silver Clay Line, Dutton, Ontario, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act 1990, as amended to sever lands legally described as Lot 30 on registered plan number 202, Municipality of West Elgin. The applicant proposed to sever a parcel with the frontage of 119.17 meters, 390.98 feet, 
and a depth of 287.42 meters, 942.98 feet, and an area of 34,251.84 meters squared, 8.46 acres for future residential development. The applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 134.33 meters, 440.72 feet, and a depth of 287.42 meters, 942.98 feet, and an area of 38.609, no, 38,000, sorry, 609.13 meters squared, 9.54 acres proposed to remain in use as a cemetery. To any of the applicants or agents and interested parties who wish to speak to this application, please introduce yourself to the committee. Yeah, or good morning, Dan McKillop. Okay, thank you, Dan. I'll now call on Paul Clark, the planner, to go through the planning procedures. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This application is to sever off a parcel for future residential development uh, from the existing cemetery. The lands are designated agricultural area and tier one settlement area in the County of Elgin official plan. The local municipality official plan is designated in that area as residential and it has two zones currently in place, future residential and residential first density R1. With respect to the provincial policy statement, the application is to sever a portion of the existing parcel for future residential development. The severed portion is within the settlement area of Rodney, while the retained portion is within the prime agricultural area. Uh, specifically to the severed parcel, section 1.1.3 of the PPS encourages the use of infill intensification to meet housing goals and directs that settlement areas shall be the focus of growth and development within municipalities. In respect of the County of Elgin official plan, the severed portion is designated as Tier 1 settlement area. The Tier 1 settlement areas are the largest in the county and have access to full municipal services. The County of Elgin official plan directs that the majority of growth and development should occur at within Tier 1 settlement areas, and the proposed severance is being requested for future residential development. Staff have reviewed this proposal against the general consent criteria contained in Section E1.2.3.1 and found no deficiencies. The retained land is currently designated as agricultural area and is presently being used as a cemetery, and there are no proposed land use changes for the retained parcel at this time. With respect of the local municipal official plan and zoning bylaw, West Elgin staff have reviewed this application against the West Elgin OP and found that it permits lot creation and a variety of residential uses in that designation. The retained lands are also designated agricultural, but as there is no proposed lot creation within those areas or change of land use, there is no deficiencies with the local official plan. The proposed severed parcel is dual zoned between R1 and future residential FR. The R1 portion of the property does permit single detached development. However, the future residential zone only permits the continuation of existing uses. Uh, <coughs> Selgan staff have noted uh, that there will need to be a zoning amendment at the future to, uh, to permit the future residential development to rezone that from FR to presumably R1. Uh, in terms of the existing zoning, however, West Elgin staff have noted no deficiencies with the zoning bylaw as the application is presented today. The application is consistent with the provincial policy statement, complies with the County of Elgin official plan and the municipality of West Elgin official plan policies. As such, staff are recommending approval subject to conditions. Number one, a digital copy of the draft and final deposited reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, a solicitor undertaking <coughs> copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the county of Elgin. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the municipality of West Elgin be included as conditions for consent. Number one, that the applicant meet all the requirements, financial and otherwise, of the municipality for the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number two, that the applicant provides a description of the lands to be severed, which can be registered in the land registry office to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number three, that the applicant solicitor provides an undertaking to the municipality to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once the transaction has occurred to the municipality. Number four, that the applicant have a drainage reapportionment completed if required pursuant to the Drainage Act to the satisfaction and clearance of the municipality. Number five, that prior to the final approval of the county, the county is advised in writing by the municipality how the above noted conditions have been satisfied. Number six, that all conditions noted above shall be fulfilled within two years of the notice of decision. 
so that the County of Elgin is authorized to issue the Certificate of Consent pursuant to Section 53, Subsection 42 of the Planning Act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paul. Any comments from any members of the committee? Doug? Yeah, I just got one question looking at this uh, picture, and maybe you can explain it a little, Dan. Um, this is all owned by the cemetery, and you're proposing to sever the piece to the east off, which is farmed in the part behind the cemetery, behind the tree line is farmed as well, right? I guess my concern is once this is severed, how is the cemetery, which owns the cemetery and the piece behind, where is the access to that farmable piece of land behind the cemetery going to be? The uh, cemetery board has uh, decided that uh, if, if, assuming the application goes through that they will uh, be using that land for green space and uh, be putting uh, uh, various things in the back of it uh, to uh, enhance the uh, community. Okay, because just looking at it, I could not see how you're gonna get farmland and I'm gonna continue farming. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from any members? John Seldon. Um, Yes, Mr. McCulloch, just I, I've, I've ne never seen a, a statement from a funeral director associated with a consent before, and that was kind of interesting. But apparently, according to the funeral director, there's uh, uh, the funeral, the two acres available for the cemetery is good for a long time. Can you define a long time? <laughs> Well, I, I, I wish I could because that's a, a pretty long statement. What, what, what happened there, and I think uh, uh, um, your planner would understand it, is this merged on title almost similar to uh, Tom Mohan's land. Uh, it mer and the whole intention was not to have it uh, merge on title, but it did. So at the advice of the lawyer, uh, we were told to get it severed. Uh, as far as what the, we reached out to the board, uh, because they're dealing with cemetery land and therefore we, got it. we wanted to make sure that we weren't um, doing anything adversely with the cemetery board. So that's why they were contacted and why we, for transparency, why we put that all in there. But no, I can't say what a long time is. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll move it. Moved by Jack Van Castern, second by John Andrews. Moved by Jack Van Casperen, seconded by John Andrews, resolved that severance application E78-2022 be approved subject to conditions. Stu Galdard? Yes. John Zeldin? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yep. Jack Van Casperen? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Ian Fleck? Yes. 7-0, the motion's carried. The decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20-day appeal period from the giving of the notice of a decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at elgin.ca. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. And they got it all put in. I think you can use that one. Okay, the next one is application E79-22. Take notice an application is made by Amy Dale, 108 Center Street, St. Thomas, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act, amended to Cyberlands, mutually known as 45255 Sparta Line, Central Elgin. The applicant proposes several parcels of the frontage of 30.48 meters, 100 feet, and a depth of 224.42 meters, 736.29 feet, and an area of 0.81 hectares, two acres, for a dwelling surplus to a farming operation. The applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 427.52 <laughs> meters, 1,402.62 feet, and a depth of 1,650 meters, 5,413.4 feet, and an area of 79.58 hectares, 196.6 acres, proposed to remain in agricultural use. Do any of the applicants or agents or interested parties who wish to speak to this application? Uh, Helen Button here again um, from Gun and Associates on behalf of Amy Dale. Thank you. I'll now ask Paul to uh, Paul Clark to go through the planning procedures. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this application is uh, for a dwelling that is surplus to a farming operation. The applicant is proposing to sever off a parcel of roughly two acres from the existing retained agricultural land. It's currently designated agricultural in the County of Elgin official plan and the local municipality's official plan and is currently designated or certainly currently designated open space one OS one in the local zoning bylaw. Uh, the committee will also note uh, in the review and analysis section of the planning report that we do have comments from both conservation authorities as the boundaries of Catfish Creek and Kettle Creek conservation authorities respectively both bisect this property uh, essentially down the middle. Uh, respect of the provincial policy statements, uh, the provincial policy statement does permit lot creation in the agricultural area where that lot is being created for a dwelling that is surplus to a farming operation, provided that the new lot be limited to minimum size and that the planning authority ensures that no new residential dwellings are allowed on the retained farmland parcel. On um, respect of that point number two, uh, the municipality of Central Elgin has requested as a condition of consent that the zoning bylaw amendment be obtained to rezone the retained farmland parcel to one that does not allow residential development. In respect of the County of Elgin official plan, lot creation in the agricultural area is generally discouraged, but is permitted for surplus farm dwellings in accordance with section E 1.2.3.4. Staff have reviewed this dwelling, or sorry, the surplus dwelling application against those policies and have found no deficiencies. In respect of the local official plan and zoning bylaw, the municipality of Central Elgin similarly contains policies which allow for lot creation in the agricultural area for surplus farm dwellings. And uh, local Central Elgin staff have reviewed this application and found no deficiencies with their official plan. In respect of the current zoning on the property, as I mentioned, they have requested a condition that the retained farmland parcel be rezoned to one that prohibits residential. <laughs> There is a slight deficiency in terms of the severed parcels. Current zoning is open space one. Uh, they have identified that it is slightly deficient in the minimum required lot frontage and Central Elgin staff uh, to deal with that have proposed a condition <coughs> severed lots frontage be increased to 30.48 meters to meet the minimum requirements of the zone. This application is consistent with the provincial policy statement complies with the County of Elgin official plan and municipality of Central Elgin's official plan policies. Staff are recommending approval subject to conditions. Number one, that the digital copy of the draft and final deposited reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, a solicitor undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the County of Elgin. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the municipality of Central Elgin be included as conditions for consent. Number one, approval of a zoning bylaw amendment to prohibit residential dwellings on the retained lot. Number two, the lot frontage of the severed lot be increased to 30.48 meters. Number three, a drainage reassessment be done if necessary at the owner's expense. And number four, a copy of the reference plan be provided to the municipality of Central Elgin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paul. Any comments from any members of the committee? John? 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Button, um, it's interesting. Why has it been required or requested that the frontage uh, be adjusted as opposed to a minor variance being sought? Would your client look for a minor variance as opposed to increasing the to the 30.48? I'm not sure. So um, Amy Dale has had more communication with them about that than I have. However, I, I did want to note that we actually had some communications with staff um, earlier on about the deficiency in the frontage, and we actually did submit an amended application and an amended um, sketch for severance with the 30.48 frontage, which was acceptable to um, our client to, to do that and to the to the purchaser, the future purchaser. So I, that's obviously not what you have um, in front of you, but we did have the amended um, application go in and with the amended sketch. Um, yeah. thank, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have, Paul has a comment. Oh, great. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, yes, the application was amended at the last minute and was circulated uh, to the municipality of Central Elegant. However, we never received any uh, new comments to reflect any changes to that. So while we are keeping in the recommendation for the original lot frontage uh, increased 30.48 meters, we do have sketches that indicate that that is already completed. Um, and once they go to clear those conditions with the municipality of Central Elgin, that will of course be one that's relatively easy to clear as it is essentially, to my knowledge already, the process of being completed. Any other questions from anyone? Thank you. Move it. Moved by Dennis O'Grady. Seconded by Duke Aldred. Moved by Dennis O'Grady, seconded by Duke Aldred. Resolved that severance application E79-2022 be approved subject to conditions. Duke Aldred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Ian Fleck? Yes. 7-0, the motion's carried. The decision rendered today for this application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There's a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of Dutay's decision, please request a copy by contacting Land Division at algon.ca. Thank you. Which is E sixty seven dash twenty two. Take notice that an application has been made on behalf of Rent Farm Family Farms for consent pursuant to Section fifty three of the Planning Act nineteen ninety as the manager to sever lands mutually known as five two three three nine Talbot Line Melhite. The applicant proposes to sever a parcel with a frontage of 97 meters, 318.24 feet, and a depth of 65.6 meters, 215.22 feet, and an area of 6,306.4 meters squared, 1.57 acres, to sever a dwelling that is surplus to a farming operation. The applicant is retaining a lot with a frontage of 278.6 meters, 914.04 feet, and a depth of 993.8 meters, 3,260.5 feet, and an area of 35.8 hectares, 88.46 acres, proposed to remain in residential or agricultural use. Applicants are agents and interested parties who wish to speak to this application. <clears throat> Please introduce yourself to the committee. 
Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Simona Rasanu. I'm a planner with uh, Strick Baldinelli Mones, and I'm the agent for this application. Thank you very much. I'll ask, now ask Paul Clark, the planner, to proceed with the planning recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this application is for a surplus uh, dwelling. Uh, the current OP designation of the subject land is agricultural in both the County of Elgin official plan and the local municipalities official plan, and it is currently designated general ag or is currently zoned, sorry, general agriculture A1. With respect of the provincial policy statement, the application is to uh, sever off a dwelling that is surplus to a farming operation. The proposed severed lot will be approximately 6,300 square meters in area and contain a residential dwelling, sheds and solar panels, as well as a well and septic system. The PPS discourages lot creation in the agricultural area, except in a few circumstances, one of those being surplus uh, dwellings. Staff have reviewed the application against the policies of the provincial policy statement and found that it is consistent with the PPS. With the respect of the County of Elgin official plan, like the PPS, the OP discourages lot creation in prime agricultural areas. An exception is provided for surplus farm dwelling uh, severances. We have reviewed the application against the policies of section E1.2.3.4b, which governs lot creation on lands in the agricultural area and found that it is compliant with the OP. The Township of Malahide has requested a condition of consent, uh, which will rezone the retained farmland parcel to a zone that prohibits residential development, satisfying both the requirements of the official plan and the provincial policy statement. Uh, with respect of the local official plan and zoning bylaw, Township of Malahide staff have uh, reviewed this application against both of those and found it complies with the township's OP. In respect of the zoning bylaw, they are proposing to rezone, as I mentioned, the retained parcel to one that prohibits residential development. And they're also proposing to rezone the severed parcel to a special exception zone in the small lot agricultural zone uh, to reflect the primary use of that lot as residential. This application has been deemed consistent with the provincial policy statement. It complies with the County of Elgin official plan and the Township of Malahide official plan policies. And as such, staff are recommending approval subject to conditions. Number <clears throat> one, that a digital copy of the draft and final deposit reference plan be provided to the County of Elgin. Number two, solicitor undertaking to provide a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once completed be provided to the County of Elgin. Number three, municipal addressing to be provided to Elgin County from the local municipality prior to final approval to the satisfaction of Elgin County. Additionally, it is recommended that the following conditions from the Township of Malahide be included as conditions for consent. Number one, that the applicant initiate and assume, if required, all engineering costs associated with the preparation of a revised assessment schedule in accordance with the Drainage Act 1990 as amended, with the deposit to be paid in full to the Township prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. If the deposit does not cover the cost of the revised assessment schedule, the applicant will be billed for any additional costs incurred. Number two, that all outstanding work orders or bylaw enforcement issues be resolved to the satisfaction of the chief building official prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Number three, that all applicate that all the applicants initiate and assume all planning costs associated with the required zoning bylaw amendment as required in accordance with the Ontario Planning Act 1990, with such costs to be paid in full to the township and that the required process be successfully completed prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Number four, confirmation the private sewage system be confined entirely within the boundaries of the newly created parcel, that system being in conformance with all the required setbacks from lot lines prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Number five, that the necessary deeds, transfers, and charges for certificates and or instruments necessary for registration be submitted in triplicate prior to the certification, all of which are to be fully executed, Number six, that all applicable property taxes, municipal fees, and charges be paid to the municipality prior to the stamping of the deeds. Number seven, that an electronic version of the reference plan be submitted to the satisfaction of the municipality. Number eight, that the applicant is responsible to apply and pay all fees to the township with respect to civic addressing numbers slash signage for the severed and retained portions of the property prior to the condition being deemed fulfilled. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> And we have a mover question. Question, yes. Not the mover and seconder first. Or? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just curious as to why you didn't want to clean up that uh, potential easement on the southeast corner of the property. Uh, 
Um, through the chair, this is uh, the agent, uh, Simona. I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, which, uh, which easement are you referring to? We don't show if an you, easement on our sketch. If you look on the application for consent, so it would be on page six of the application for consent, or there's a statement saying that there, uh, as per the owners, there's a sliver of the portion on the southeast side of the subject land um, is an easement in favor of the township of Malahide, although it doesn't appear to be registered. And then you're simply saying if the easement exists, it'll just continue to exist. Uh, I'm just curious if I was a homeowner, I'd want that cleared up. I wouldn't want a ghost easement on my property. Well, that's that would be part of the Yeah, sure, right. According to the application, you don't know yeah. if it's an easement or not. So my question I, is, yeah, it should be verified. It either is an easement or it's not. That should be very easy to find out from the township. I'm not going to put it as a condition, but you should find out if that's an easement or not. I, I wouldn't leave that just hanging. Okay, we will. Uh, I will uh, confirm with the surveyor once the surveyor is engaged um, to prepare okay. the reference plan. Thank you. Any other questions from any members? Moved by Jack Van Castern, seconded by John Andrews. I ask for the vote to be called. Moved by Jack Van Castern, seconded by John Andrews. Resolved that severance application E67-2022 be approved subject to conditions. Doug Aldred? Yes. John Zeldin? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yes. Jack Van Castern? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Yes. Ian Fleck? Yes. 7-0, the motion's carried. The decision rendered today the application will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has two years to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new app application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting landvision at algon.ca. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have the next one. Hang on, time. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Which is application E8921 and E9021. And I'm going to have the Paul the planner speak to this, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this is essentially just going back and uh, the applicant has requested that we extend the uh, deadline for lapsing. These applications were originally uh, approved at the end of last year. Uh, they were lapsed December 15th of this year. At that time when it was approved, the Planning Act only provided a maximum of one year for the lapse date. Um, obviously, the Planning Act has been amended now, and we're using standard practice in our decisions to provide a two-year lapse date. Uh, the applicant has also applied to amend the applications and make some slight changes uh, to them. We have received those amended applications and they are uh, they have been reviewed and are going to be going in front of the LDC in the future. But in order to avoid these applications lapsing before then, uh, the applicant is requesting that we just amend the decision only to change that lapse date. And then we will revisit the amended applications and have the necessary public meetings in the future. Uh, so essentially nothing at this time is really changed with the applications. All we're doing is amending the notice of decision. Uh, so staff are recommending that the severance applications uh, notice of decisions for E8921 and E9021 be amended to establish a new lapse date of December 15, 2023. That is two years from the original notice of decision. And that section 53, subsection 26 of the Planning Act as amended applies to the changes as the decision is minor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'll move. Moved by John Seldon. I got. I have a question. I'll second it, but I've also got a question. Second by Dennis O'Grady. 
Um, Go ahead with your question. We've had this before. People ask for extensions without any explanation, and uh, I'm a little bit hesitant um, to uh, vote for it, not knowing why they weren't able to get it. Um, and then when you talk about there are minor amendments, so really there's two things. Not only are we extending it, but they've altered their application. You consider it minor, but shouldn't we as an LDC decide if it's minor or not? Um, like, where does that line draw? You, you're saying we should we should approve it. It's minor. We don't know what the minor amendments are, but we're approving the application with the minor amendments, not knowing why it's late in the first place, nor what the amendments are. So could you give us some insight into that, please? Yeah, I can speak to that uh, through Mr. Chair, and I, I believe uh, Mr. Benjamins is also here as the agent on this, and he can speak to this as well. But at this time, the minor amendments, the decision that we're making is only to change the lap state. Uh, nothing else is being changed, including the conditions or was originally approved by the Land Division Committee. All we're doing is providing an extra year on this application. The amendments to the application itself are being done just to provide um, some necessary changes to the survey that was performed. So the lot lines have been altered slightly over the 3% maximum that we permit uh, for deviations from the application. So they have submitted an amendment application to uh, apply those changes. What we're doing with this specific amendment today is only amending the notice of decision to provide an extra year for the lap state. The amended application itself with the new lot lines <coughs> back to LDC in the future. But if we don't amend the application today to provide that extra year extension, they'll have to come back and pay full fees and redo the application essentially from the beginning. Are there any fees associated with a um, resubmission later on? There is a $300 fee per amended application, which has been paid by the applicants already. For both of them? Yeah, so a total of $600. Yeah, I, uh, Paul, that's great information. If you could just add stuff like that, it would just, you know, then I could glance at it, read it, and I think that it help us make the decision saying, okay, yeah, it is a minor and it does make sense. But there wasn't enough information. The stuff you gave us is great. And if you could just add some of those points in the future, I think that would help us make a decision better. Certainly. Jack? I'm going to assume something here, Dennis, that we probably wouldn't be dealing with this today if an amended application has already come in. Due to the recent announcement that this committee will not be meeting in November or December, that amended application won't be coming in before the time runs out, December 15th. That's why I believe, and it's totally an assumption, that this is why it's on our table today. Otherwise, we'd be hearing this in November or in December yep. before the time ran out. We changed everything to give people mm -hmm. more time. If uh, go ahead. Um, hi, my name is uh, Trevor Benjamins. I'm the agent on the application um, on behalf of the Community of Christ. There, the reason we are. I understand that the amendments will not take place at this date, but that is correct. The, the reason we brought um, or requesting the additional time period is because the septic system location on the original survey um, was a, not plotted in the correct location. I did not submit the original applications. Um, they were completed by another planner. However, uh, um, the lot lines need to be adjusted um, to include the limits of the septic system, and that's why we're asking for the additional year. Thank you very much. Any other comments? What's the resolution? Because I was going to just, uh, what's the resolution? Sure, I can read the resolution. Uh, resolve that the notice of decision for severance applications E8921 and E9021 be amended by changing the lapse date to December 15, 2023, and that section 53, subsection 26 of the Planning Act, as amended, applies to this decision. I would just like a clause saying, in order to correct the, what was it the measurements for the septic system? It's coming later, isn't it? Yeah, so through you, Mr. Chair, that application has been submitted already. We have received it, um, and that will be coming in front of the LDC yeah. future. The resolution that you've got, there's no rationale. If I looked at it, two years or if the new LDC looked at it two years that they wouldn't know why it was extended. I always like to have some justification for our resolution. 
And I just have one comment as I know if we're gonna have two more applications come in because they can't get surveys and all the, the lawyer stuff oh, yeah. can't get it done. Basically. One year wasn't enough time now. Yeah. yeah. And some of these may not be heard till February. They're not, you know, there's no guarantee they're gonna be even heard in January. So ten months is definitely not enough time. Yeah. So okay. any other further questions? Uh, moved by John Selden, seconded by Dennis O'Grady, resolved that notice of decision for severance applications E8920 uh -huh. and E9021 be amended by changing the lapse date to December 15, 2023, and that Section 53, subsection 26 of the Planning Act 1990, as amended, applies to this decision. Du Galdred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yep. Jai Pencastron? Yes. Rosemary Kennedy? Ian Fleck? Yes. 7 0, the motion's carried. Any further business, Paul? Nope, not on that one. Have an adjournment. I just got one, one question. Yep. And I guess the last three years we weren't, we were in lame duck the last two, two months of the year, like we carried on with November and December. This is the only year we get caught. My understanding is this is the only year we get caught is the last of the election year. That's why. But Jack's interpretation and letter um, portrayed the accuracy, and I don't think that the interpretation by staff is accurate. I, don't I would like to let this discussion be stopped. I have had a meeting, and I'd like to have the adjournment come, and this any talk can be held. And it's still a meeting. You can't adjourn it. If we're, if we're still here as a full committee, you can't adjourn the meeting because it's a full committee. It's like council. Oh, and the, the meeting is we're all done as of now what was on the agenda and i have an adjournment I'm not voting to adjourn but it's up to you there's been no motion to adjourn then it will never be my understanding of this here these re remarks are going to just stay the way they are so we will never be officially at a, it was a meeting well what's the meeting the council chair. meeting mr chairman if, if we're meeting as a full group you can't just say the meetings adjourn and then we carry on business as if nothing happened we have to be in session if we're going to continue to talk about the business of the ldc if, if anybody has questions or comments on the emails I believe that Julie sent last week, I would suggest either contacting myself in an email, not CCing or addressing that to the rest of the members of the committee, just to myself, Brian and Julie directly, and we can answer any questions that you have on an individual basis. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. It's a committee decision, not an individual member's decision. It's not. And it was an email. It was, oh, it was oh, a no more talk email. about this now. Can we shut? We can't shut that up. Thank What's your rationale you. for that, Mr. Chairman? For no more talk, no more discussion about an LDC meeting and interpretation? What's your rationale? Wait a minute. We have gone through the meeting. It was not listed on the agenda that this was going to be as discussed. And so, so if any discussion you want, you can have it over there in a point, but let's get the meeting adjourned. So it's official and on the minutes as a meeting. So the stuff will go through and be done. I'll move the we adjourn. Moved by Dennis O'Grady. Seconded by John Andrews. Moved by Dennis O'Grady, seconded by John Andrews. Resolved that the committee adjourn at 11.10 a.m. Do Galdred? Yes. John Selden? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dennis O'Grady? Yep. Jack Van Gastron? Yep. Rosemary Kennedy, Ian Fleck? Yes. 7-0, the motion's carried. Thank you very much. And I would like to just make a comment that I've appreciated your support during this difficult time for this past year. We've gone through a lot with staff changes and everything, but uh, I'm limited in what I can, can say and do. So could I ask a question of Michelle? Our Or how much you want to help yourself on a weekend yeah. Yeah. so it's been finally late i don't know back for you
I'll call the meeting to order and we will begin with the request for deferral of application or for any request for a withdrawal.